So, SpaceX has announced that Japanese entrepreneur and billionaire Yusaku Meizawa has purchased a flight around the moon on the Big Falcon spaceship in 2023. And Meizawa plans to bring along with him artists who can create masterpiece works of art inspired by the experience of flying around the moon and inspire humanity in the process. Oh my god, there is so much to talk about. This is an important step towards enabling access for everyday people who dream of going to space. My co-host on TMRO, Jared Head, said it best with his tweet where he said that space is no longer the exclusive domain of the test pilot, the military, or the academic. The artists are now joining and soon everyone will follow and I cannot agree more. Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this. So how did we get to this point where everyday people, albeit very creative and talented people, have a one in a billion chance to fly to the moon? To answer that, we need to focus on the company, SpaceX. They've had many ambitious goals over the years, first to provide low-cost access to space, which they did, and then to provide even cheaper access to space by landing and reusing their rockets. They're doing that too. They eventually want to send people and hardware to the surface of Mars and begin colonizing the planet for real. Every step of the way though, they've received skepticism until they actually achieved their stated goals. But even through their success, SpaceX especially has been scrutinized for their goal of a human spaceflight to Mars. Despite that, Elon Musk and everyone at SpaceX has been hard at work designing and building the rockets and spacecraft that'll achieve their lofty goal of sending 100 people People at a time to the surface of Mars. Along the way, they realize that the vehicle they are building is capable of reaching many more destinations other than Mars, and they've stated that if there was interest, their big Falcon rocket and its associated spaceship could reach the moons of Jupiter, the moons of Saturn, and easily our own moon, which has led to this private lunar mission. As the announcement of this lunar mission began, Elon Musk reiterated why they're doing this. Why space? Why Mars? To help advance rocket technology to the point where we could potentially become a multi-planet species and a, and a true space-bearing civilization. So, <clears throat> After a few minutes of giving updates on the design of the vehicle, Elon Musk introduced Yusaku Meizawa. Thank you, Elon. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Yusaku Meizawa is a real renaissance man. He's an art curator, a fashion designer, musician, painter, photographer, film director, and founded his own company, Zozo, almost 20 years ago. Meizawa believes that art has the power to promote world peace. And through his whole global art project, which he's calling Dear Moon, he is not going to the moon alone. He wants to bring some of the best living artists from different fields with him on his week-long journey to the moon and back. Meizawa's Dear Moon project could be a hugely impactful event on humanity that expresses spaceflight in a whole new way. By having creatively expressive people go along on this flight, the art that will be created is going to be incredible. No one knows at this point what the result will be, but the possibilities boggle my mind. This could be one of the most exciting and inspiring human spaceflight missions of all time. Artists, fashion designers, photographers, filmmakers, especially those who care about spaceflight or humanity in general, should be inspired by this and compete to improve the quality of their work so that they might be one of the lucky humans who are chosen to share this experience with humanity. I personally will endeavor to be on this mission, as should everyone who wants to go on this flight and who wants to inspire humanity to go further. Just imagining the artwork and music and beauty that is no doubt being created right now in hopes of being chosen gets me excited. Oh man, just like Elon said in the announcement, this has restored my faith in humanity. And I mean, this could lead to a whole new era of discovery and culture and human achievement if we step up to the plate and put our best foot forward. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm being overly optimistic, but like Elon and Meizawa, I choose to go to the moon, and so should all of you. And together we will go to the stars. We have the technology. Let this be the path that takes us there. Wow.
Speaking of technology, the BFR and BFS had quite a few updates with this announcement. Oh man, the BFR or Big Falcon Rocket has gone through quite a few design changes since it was first publicly presented in 2016, known at the time as the Interplanetary Transport Ship or ITS. A year later, when Elon Musk gave an updated presentation in 2017, the name was simply BFS for Big Falcon Spaceship and BFR for Big Falcon Rocket. The size of both the rocket and the spaceship had been scaled down from the original ITS presentation in 2016. Originally, ITS would have been 12 meters in diameter and 122 meters in length, but the 2017 BFR update was only 9 meters in diameter and 106 meters in length. At this lunar BFR announcement, we learned that the size has increased to 118 meters in length, but is still the same diameter. The aerodynamic fins have been replaced by dual-use wings, so to speak, that are actually landing legs. But the bottom wings, or legs, will fold on actuators to assist re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. But additional fins have been added to the top of the spaceship, which will also move on actuators and will assist maneuverability of the spaceship in an atmosphere. Despite the capability the Big Falcon spaceship has to land on the surface of the moon, it will only perform a fly-around of the moon, Apollo 8 style, with a return trajectory to Earth and will fire its engines to land near the same point it lifted off from. The size of the spaceship has increased as well to accommodate more cargo, and the engine configuration has changed as well. Those rectangles that you see around the engines are actually cargo containers. Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, was actually there at the event and asked a question about the engine configuration and got a great answer about the cargo containers and how they can be swapped out for different engines. Hey Elon, uh, Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut here. Uh, I see that you changed the engine configuration for the BFS. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, is there still engine out capability? You know, is it vacuum optimized but still landable on sea level? Can they function as an abort system? Can you just kind of tell us about your new decision making on that? Oh yeah, actually you noticed that, uh, that's a good thing to notice, uh, um, good eye. We decided to commonize the engine between the booster and the ship. So um, like a, a future upgrade path for BFS would be to have a vacuum optimized nozzle. Like where you see those, those like that sort of cargo around the perimeter, um, you can actually switch out those cargo sections for a, a vacuum nozzle version of the Raptor. So I was actually writing and live updating an article for Everyday Astronaut on his website, and you can imagine my surprise when he asked his question and got the response that he did from Elon. That, that, that was so cool. All right, so when will this happen? What needs to happen next? And is 2023 a realistic date? So Elon has a history of making really ambitious goals for SpaceX's rocket developments. For example, when he first presented Falcon Heavy in 2011, he said that it would fly for the first time in 2013. It didn't actually fly for the first time until February of this year, 2018, but it still flew. This is collectively known in the space industry as Elon time, and Elon time is a little bit hard to convert into real time sometimes. When asked if he thought that the 2023 target date for the lunar mission was realistic, Musk replied, No, we're, we're definitely not sure. Um, I want to be clear. Um, I mean, this is a ridiculously big rocket. It's got so much advanced technology. You know, I mean, if, if it, I mean, it, it's not 100% certain that we succeed in getting this to flight. It's not even 100% certain. Like, I think it's put pretty likely, but it's not certain. And, uh, yeah, but we're going to do everything humanly possible to bring it to flight as fast as, as we can um, and as safely as we can. Yeah. Honestly, to me, that sounds like realistic expectations. So, before the first flight with people on board, several milestones have to be met first. Over the years, SpaceX has been building and testing subsystems of the rocket. They've built and tested to the extreme part of the fuel tanks, they've conducted several tests of their Raptor engine, and they are building the structure right now. A technology demonstrator will be built before anyone flies on the vehicle, and Elon said that they would conduct test flights and short hops of the Big Falcon spaceship next year. 
Oh my gosh, similar to the Grasshopper program that SpaceX conducted on the path to landing their Falcon 9 boosters. He then said that high altitude tests of the spaceship would occur in 2020, and booster tests of the big Falcon rocket would also occur in 2020. A full-scale test flight of the rocket and spaceship will be needed, at least in Earth orbit, so that they can test and ensure that the vehicle can re-enter and return to Earth safely. And if, if things go well, we could be doing the first orbital flights in about two to three years. And then we'll do, we'll do many such test flights and um, before putting any people on board. I'm not sure if we will actually test a flight around the moon or not, but probably we will try to do that without people before sending people. That would be wise. <laughs> I think this can happen by 2023. I think that's realistic and not Elon time. I mean, that's only five years from now, and SpaceX has already been working on BFR for the past two to three years, if not way longer than that. And Yusaku Miyazawa already paid a large deposit for his flight and for the development of the vehicle. So money might not be a problem for at least one flight of the BFR, maybe. But in any case, yes, we're getting a lot of pretty renderings and pretty pictures, but SpaceX is actually building this thing right now. It may still be an evolving design, but it's real. And I truly believe it will be flying soon. Now, for those of you who've been following SpaceX for a while, you may remember that a couple of years ago, back in 2016, they announced that two private passengers would be flying around the moon on a crew dragon launched by a Falcon Heavy in the year 2018, but in 2017 that mission was cancelled. Well, it turns out we learned from this announcement that the customer for that mission on the Crew Dragon was Yusaku Meazawa. Well, it, it's, it's, it's the same person, um, but, but, but with, with um, Falcon Heavy and Dragon that we would have had essentially, especially for a trip around the moon, only room for two people, because it's meant for sort of four to seven for low Earth orbit on Dragon. But it's like about the size of, um, you know, an SUV inside there. SpaceX announced that that Crew Dragon mission was canceled because they weren't going to human rate Falcon Heavy after all. But it turns out the mission wasn't canceled, it was just switched to the BFR so that Meizawa could bring more people on a bigger, better spaceship. This is happening, people. Ugh. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments who you would choose to bring on this mission. I'm having a hard time of figuring out which artists to bring that would best represent the entire world. And maybe that's the point of making the announcement right now, to see which artists are going to step up and rise to the occasion. Hmm. Oh man. Well, in any case, thank you very much for watching this video. Give me a like if you're just as excited about this announcement as I am. And if you would like to see more videos about rockets and space flight, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Share this video on social media if you'd like to help me out, and if you'd really like to support this channel, head on over to patreon.com slash epicfuturespace to contribute. Thank you so much to the folks who have been contributing already. It makes a big difference, and it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for now. I am Space Mike, and until the next time I see you, keep on moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars. <laughs>